Over the years, cinema has been graced with many directors, but I doubt many of them have such a passion for filmmaking and dialogue brilliance like Quentin Tarantino. Not only do his movies garner exceptional praise, but every single scene this man puts out proves he's a cinematic guru. When he's not making movies that make you scratch your head at their absurdity, he goes down to the molecular level to deliver top-notch, unparalleled cinematic quality with a carefully chosen cast. Today, let's take a look at the top 10 Quentin Tarantino scenes that prove he's a legend. Get your backsides up against that back wall over here. God damn it! Get or don't get, Joe Gage, it's up to you. I'm getting. Then get! Let's kick off this list with a detective scene from The Hateful Eight at number 10. You've gotta hand it to Samuel L. Jackson for delivering such a stellar performance in this scene. In this three hour flick, it's definitely the highlight and it's just 13 minutes of pure acting and writing genius. <laughs> oh, let's not forget the camera work. The way it tracks Jackson's movements and keeps him at the center, with its costume being the most standout of all the characters, is just heavenly to watch. No dogs or Mexicans allowed. <laughs> the way all these elements just mesh together could not have come about without the brilliance of Tarantino's vision. And if you lying, which you are, then you killed many. And three days. You know, when you asked to drive me home, you didn't mention your car didn't have a passenger seat. Yeah, well, actually, I didn't ask to drive you home. You asked me for a ride, and I said yes. But look at the bright side, Pam. On to number nine with the, well, Pam, scene from Death Proof. Who knew Kurt Russell could play such a satisfying villain? Death Proof surely proves that, and then some. As a stuntman driver, Russell's character scours the night for women to take on death rides in his spare time. In one of the movie's most chilling scenes, he picks up a woman by the name of Pam. When she enters the car, he asks her, Well, Pam, which way are you going? Left or right? Right. When she picks a direction, he nonchalantly tells her that he's afraid she has to Start getting scared. Immediately. That's still not the best part. By the end, he reminds Pam that the car is deathproof. In fact, 100% deathproof but she has to be in a seat to get the full benefit of it. Russell's acting and Tarantino's writing, as well as the frame in which the scene is shot from inside the car, bring a new meaning to cinematic climax. Knock your fuck out. Take your fucking hand. Okay, okay, take it. Jesus, what's wrong with I'm you? I'm carrying a bag. Yeah, right, you got it. Just take a chill pill for Christ's sake. Fuck you with your chill pill. At we have the parking lot scene from Jackie Brown. If Hitchcock was the master of suspense, I think we should grant Tarantino the award for master of shocks, but this one is definitely a shocker. After leaving a shopping mall with Melanie, Robert De Niro's character Louis has to constantly listen to her nagging and teasing him with Louis? Louis? Feeling he's had just about enough, he warns her to keep her mouth shut. Well, what do you know? She doesn't. After building up a one-take tracking shot between the two characters, you'd think De Niro's reaction would be to slap her or to shout, but the last thing anyone expected was for Melanie to get shot in broad daylight in the parking lot of a mall. The scene doesn't even cut to black from there. It still tracks De Niro as he moves away from the corpse towards his car and he turns around to give a witty remark. He got a hand in Tarantino's audaciousness. Cold. Very cold. So, Ted the Bell Boy, would you care for some champagne, as I was saying? I'm actually... <laughs> That wasn't what I was saying, but would you give us some champagne? Now, let's get to number 7 with Tarantino's own rant in Four Rooms. Every now and then, directors like to cameo and star in their own movies, but this scene is especially memorable to its director because Tarantino wrote, directed, and starred in this scene. This part of the anthology sees him as a director who is used to everyone bowing down to his every request. <laughs> While not the most well-received scene in the eyes of many, Tarantino really cut loose in terms of his acting, and he portrays a sense of real anger in his rent when he's given some awful champagne. I said, who drank out of this bottle last? The fuck's wrong? It's fucking flat, man. That's what's fucking wrong. Some meta footage right there, but it's the acting that really seals the deal. What was I talking about? Can't be a Tarantino movie without some gore as we go to number 6 with a grand shootout in Django Unchained. Affectionately named the Candyland Massacre, this scene caps off a stellar back and forth verbal duel between Leonardo DiCaprio's and Christoph Waltz's respective characters as the bullets start flying through the mansion. Definitely one of the absolute best shootout scenes in his career, Tarantino really showed off some spectacular camera direction and some equally horrendous gore when Jamie Foxx gets his revenge and mows down his enemies. Okay, 
Really gotta work on calling minor voice down. Ooh. Billy Crash here got his pistol upside her head. You don't stop all that can on, he gonna blow her goddamn brains out. <laughs> We're finally at the top 5 with a huge spoiler, so turn back if you haven't watched Kill Bill Volume 2. To those of you who watched the movie, or chose to stick around, great choice. Tarantino manages to capture a multitude of emotions in just one scene at the end of Kill Bill Volume 2. We start off by panning into the bathroom door as a little girl is watching cartoons on the TV. Then we can see Uma Thurman on the bathroom floor, taking center stage as the saga of murder and revenge ends with her crying her eyes out. What's most alluring about this scene is its power in showing anger, relief, sadness, and many other adjectives in just a few seconds. What makes it even more precious is when she exits the bathroom to hug her daughter with a huge smile on her face. You certainly earned it, Uma. <laughs> now we're at number 4 with a personal favorite of mine, the bar scene from Inglorious Bastards. What can I say? I'm a sucker for World War II movies. Give me a Tarantino directed World War II movie? Oh, you bet I'll watch it a thousand times at least. On a more serious note, this scene hammers the point home that Tarantino is a master of shocks as well as suspense. <laughs> The scene plays out primarily in German, as Michael Fassbender and his other compatriots are undercover. The tension ramps up as a Gestapo officer enters the scene, and it's something. Even though they're now playing a game of guess who, you're left to the edge of your seat when things really take a left turn. In a brilliant bit of cultural knowledge, Fassbender gives himself away with a simple gesture, and the look the Gestapo officer gives him just proves how great direction always leads to great scenes which then produces a great movie. After that, we're given one of Tarantino's finest standoffs to date. Uh, those who've watched the movie know exactly what I'm talking about. See how it feeds into your Nazi boss. C'est un plaisir de vous rencontrer, Monsieur Lapadite. Je suis le Colonel SS Hans Landa. We can't leave Inglorious Bastards alone without mentioning its best scene, which just so happens to be the opening at number three. We're taken to a farmhouse that's getting a routine visit to conduct a hunt for Jews by the cleverly dubbed Jew Hunter as he greets his host in French. As the conversation carries on in an interrogative-like manner, the conversation switches over to English as both men indirectly discuss the fact that there are Jews hiding somewhere in the farmer's home. He talks to the farmer about how Germans are hawks and Jews are rats. The audience is now expecting something to happen, but the scene still keeps going until Landa asks firmly, You're sheltering enemies of the state, are you not? The colonel now knows the targets he's looking for are right underneath him, but he still has one last card to play. Monsieur Lapadite. He switches back to French, and with an adieu, the scene ends with gunfire, blood, and splinters of wood everywhere. Truly a spectacle of cinematic suspense, Tarantino. Well done. Oops. Excuse me, pal. One thing I want to make clear to you, I don't have a boss. Nobody tells me what to do. At number two, we have the Mr. Blonde scene from Tarantino's first movie, Reservoir Dogs. If you have ever wanted to experience raw, uncomfortable emotions, Tarantino's direction of the Mr. Blonde scene has got you covered. With Stuck in the Middle with You playing in the background of the scene, Michael Madsen really tears into a copy torturing. Most of the violence happens off screen, but the audience is then greeted with a sliced ear, which he uses as a form of comic relief. You think the scene is about to end as Michael Madsen leaves the building, but he's just gone out to grab a jerry can from the trunk of a car parked outside. Stop! What? Stop. What's the matter? Doesn't help that the music fades to silence while he's out and comes back when he goes back in. Definitely ruined the song for a lot of people, including myself. Ugh. Please. Look, I got a little kid going down. Please. You all done? Don't! 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 As with any suspenseful scene, it starts out like any regular conversation, but quickly sees Samuel L. Jackson reciting this line many people memorize by heart. What? As him and John Travolta point a gun at his interrogatee, and then proceed to strike him down with great vengeance and furious anger. <sighs> Nevertheless, the scene is Tarantino at his best. 
That's all for today. We thank you and hope you enjoyed our list. If you feel your favorite moment was not on this list, please leave us a comment. And yeah, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon to never miss my new uploads. I dare you! I double dare you! I'll see you next time.